G'day, Tom here from Reformers Bookshop. We're here again for another Browse the Bookshop with Tom session. Uh, what we love to do here at Reformers Bookshop is help you find great Christian books that will help you grow in your love for God and your service of Him in your life. And so we do these Browse the Bookshop sessions to highlight some books that we think will benefit you in your Christian walk. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do. As always, we uh, would love to give you personal uh, help as well. So if you want recommendations or advice on what sort of books might be helpful for your particular situation, please do message us on Facebook or email us or call us or pop into our shop here in the inner west of Sydney. Uh, we love to help people find great Christian books to read. So I've got a, a small selection here today to go through. Uh, and let's let's work through them and see if there's anything here that's helpful for you. To begin with, let's let's start with the Christian life. There's some some great books out there to help with the Christian life in general. Uh, this one here is called "Is This It?" It's by Rachel Jones, and it's a book that looks at the quarter life crisis. So it's for twenty something year olds, people who uh, get to that stage of life, maybe after university, starting to get into work. Um, and just realizing that life is uh, so often a journey that's not necessarily as exciting as it was made out in the Disney movies. Um, and so Rachel Jones works through a whole series of different um, topics. She talks about um, how to work out what to do with, with your life. She talks about work, about loneliness, singleness, marriage, getting old, um, all these sorts of different things. And I, I actually think this is a fantastic book because it combines a whole lot of different books that I would recommend to people that age, things like Just Do It by Kevin DeYoung, um, sorry, Just Do Something by Kevin DeYoung, or uh, uh, even The Seven Myths About Singleness by Sam Albury. This book contains a really good introduction to those topics where if you'd want to explore more, you'd go to those other books. But this one covers all of those topics in one book, um, so if you have a 20-something in your something year old in your life who's struggling with, with what to do or struggling with the disappointment that life can often be, this is a great book for them. Uh, another book, the sort of general Christian life stuff, uh, this book, Unstuck by Timothy Lane, uh, is a book that looks at that moment of temptation. Uh, and so often we have battles in our Christian life that we're battling the same sin over and over again, or similar sins or patterns of sin. And so Tim Lane looks at some uh, a bit of a framework of how you can think through uh, the battle uh, for holiness in your life and uh, things that you can think about before you get into that moment of temptation, things that you can uh, act on in that moment of temptation and things that you can do after uh, that moment as well. And I think it's such a helpful thing to think about. Uh, so often we just sort of float through the Christian life without really thinking about uh, how we're going to wage war on our flesh and on the sin and on the devil and on the world um, in order to become more holy. So this book will help you in that. This is another one. This, is, this has been out for a while and, um, and I, I just think it's wonderful. And if you haven't read it, uh, you should. It's applicable to both men and women. It's called Untangling Emotions. And it looks at how we are to view emotions in our life. Uh, are we to be stoics, ignoring our emotions? Are we to be uh, ultra emotional, um, being controlled and run by our emotions? Or is there some middle ground? And, and what is it that our emotions are there to do anyway? What do they tell us about ourselves? What do they tell us about God and how we should interact with him? So uh, I think this is one of the best books out there on emotions um, and how to deal with them. Okay, a couple of new books for women, although if I'm honest, I reckon these would be pretty good to read for anyone. Uh, I reckon this one in particular I'd be interested in reading, but we'll get to that. Uh, this first one is by Megan Hill, A Place to Belong. Um, this I've, I've heard wonderful things about this. Uh, it looks at the local church and the importance of it uh, just by looking through nine different words that the Bible uses to describe the church and exploring those ideas to bring out the importance and value of the church in the life of a believer. So that's a, a really important book. 
worth reading. This one here, this is the one that I reckon could be pretty good. Growing Together by Melissa Kruger, taking mentoring beyond small talk and prayer requests. This, I think, uh, runs along a similar line to Ed Welsh's caring for one another. How, how can we build deeper relationships? Uh, so often our relationships are so um, surface level um, and we, we have this desire for deeper relationships, but there's so many difficulties in actually achieving that. Uh, so this, this looks specifically at how we can mentor each other better in the Christian uh, in the church to help each other grow in the Christian life. Um, so that would be an excellent read as well. Uh, here's, here's an interesting little book that's come in recently. This is the ESV Bible, but it's the smallest ESV Bible that's ever been published. This is called a pocket Bible. This one here is buffalo leather. It's quite beautiful. And um, here's my phone. Uh, which is a pretty standard size phone, you can see that the Bible here is the pretty well the same size as my phone. I tried before, it actually fits in your pocket. So it's truly a pocket Bible. And what we were amazed when we opened it up here at the shop is that it's very readable. It's um, very, very well done. So if you want a nice little Bible to carry around with you when you're traveling, um, there's a few different editions of the ESV Pocket Bible. Here's some new kids' books that have just come in. This, these are from the series Good News for Little Hearts, which is a series of kids' books that seek to apply biblical counselling principles to the problems that kids face. So uh, the early ones, some, some of them were dealing with anger, um, some were dealing with uh, grief, what happens when you lose something, some were dealing with failure. Uh, these three here, Buster tries to bail, this deals with stress. Uh, Haley takes a stand, dealing with when you want to fit in. Um, but you shouldn't, perhaps. And when Caspian crashes the party, looking at jealousy, and they're they're great. They have great illustrations by Joe Hawks. Bright, vibrant colours, uh, and the stories always seeking to bring out the difficulties and and trials of the Christian life that everyone faces, the kids included, and bringing it back to the gospel. And I love at the end of these books, they have two little things. The first is, whoop, when I get there, the first is a little explanation for parents as to how you can deal with the particular issue uh, that the book's dealing with in your family. Um, and the next thing is these little pocket Bible verses because the, the Word of God is the sort of the Spirit, it's the thing that changes us, it's the thing that God loves to work through to bring uh, sanctification and conviction of sin and growth in holiness into our lives. And so uh, it's a great way to practically help our kids to deal with issues that they face, uh, giving them a little pocket Bible verse to help them remember the biblical truths and to live them out in their lives. So these are three new books in the series. That there's nine books now in, in this Good News for Little Hearts series, and you can see them all on our website. So that's a very helpful resource for parents in particular, but not just parents, and that brings us to this one. Uh, grandparents too might find these helpful for, for helping their grandkids. This, this, is, this is a new book about uh, discipling your grandchildren uh, by Josh Mulverhill. It's part of a series called Grandparenting Parenting Matters, which they just brought out uh, in the last maybe 12 months. Um, and I think Josh Mulverhill did a bunch of work thinking about what it means to grandparent, what it means to be a, a, a grandparent. And so he's producing these materials to try to assist and help uh, grandparents to see their role that they have in their grandchildren's lives. And what I love about it is that he, he pitches it as this second chance that you have to be a major influence in the, Christ, in the uh, discipling and the, um, in the building up of young people in the admonition and instruction of the Lord. And so this book, the new, this new one, is packed full of really practical little ideas as to how you can um, help your grandkids to grow. Uh, things like even, even gift ideas, what, what things you could buy your kids that would help them, or your grandkids that would help them to grow in uh, their knowledge of the Lord. Um, intentional meals, specific meals you could have, uh, ways that you can teach your grandkids ways that you can share the gospel, uh, ways that you can bring them into serving with you, serving the Lord. 
Um, all sorts of little practical ideas. You can see they're very, they're very short to, it's just introducing an idea really, just giving you prompters how you can um, grow your grandchildren's faith uh, and help them along in their journey. So I think that's a great little resource for grandparents, even churches you could have one of those in their library, um, just to give some ideas to grandparents as to how to be helpful to their grandkids. Here's another one. We've mentioned it before, but we've been watching these, uh, some of the DVDs from these in, in my church, and so I thought I'd just mention it again. This is the Puritan All of Life to the Glory of God pack, uh, and it comes with a two-hour documentary as well as, I think, what is it? 35-part video series uh, looking at how the Puritans t were so helpful on a variety of different topics. So half the video uh, talks, they, they all go for about 15 to 20 minutes, and half of them are on uh, people, Puritans, and the influence that they had. Uh, so last night we watched in our Bible study William Perkins and learned about the contribution that he made to Christianity and the things that we can learn from him. And the other half of the videos look at different topics. So it might be marriage or education, or it could be a conscience. We looked at that in our Bible study recently. Uh, or it could be all sorts of different areas um, that where the, the Puritans made a significant contribution. Uh, and so if you're, I, I think this is great for churches in Bible studies as, as like fillers or even a whole series that you can work through. I know churches have done that with this. Uh, I would also, um, I'll be using it with my kids as they grow up, uh, the great little family devotions, um, when maybe on a night where it's, uh, it's a little chaotic, you could put on a 15 minute um, little video to learn something about the Puritans together, particularly as your kids get into those teenage years. Uh, and I just think it's a, it's a wonderful resource to have around, uh, around you somewhere to learn from the greats of the past. All right, the last couple, these are specifically for pastors uh, or those who would like to be going into pastoral ministry or uh, those who preach as well. The first one I'll, I'll let you know about is a new one um, called Being a Pastor. It's about Andrew Fuller and really the bulk of it is a collection of Andrew Fuller's ordination sermons, the sermons he preached at the commencement of uh, other people's pastoral ministry and then at the and this little bit here is an interaction with those pastoral uh, ordination sermons, seeking to pull out the major truths that we should learn uh, today from Andrew Fuller. So it's a great way to uh, learn both firsthand from Andrew Fuller, but also secondhand having the, the um, things that he saw and the, the beliefs that he had about the pastoral ministry applied to us today. And so if you're in pastoral ministry or considering pastoral ministry, this would be a, a great little resource to keep you thinking about what's important uh, and what to strive for in ministry. This book, Reformed Preaching by Joel Beakey, is all about preaching, obviously. It's quite a significant work uh, and he does a, a bunch of different things in here. He looks at what Reformed preaching is, so as opposed to, um, I guess, other sorts of preaching. He positions reform preaching as being something that's uh, doctrinal, but most importantly, experiential. It's seeking to bring the truths of the, the Bible, that's the doctrine, to bear on the life of those who hear it, uh, applying it to their life in a way that's rich uh, and full of true Christian piety. And he does this in a few different ways. He, uh, first off, just explains what he thinks about preaching to you, but then he spends a, a significant amount of time looking at preachers from the past and how they did it. So uh, preachers like, uh, let me get some examples for you, Calvin or Perkins, who were mentioned before, Sibs, Bunyan, Goodwin, uh, some of the Puritans, but also into the, the Dutch reformers uh, and even the 18th century and 19th century people like Edwards uh, or Ryle, or McShane, and even all the way up to Lloyd-Jones. So he follows preaching all the way through, really from the Reformation era all the way through to today. Uh, and then he, at the end, gives you about 100 pages uh, of 
de- uh, ways that you can preach experientially reformed, uh, doctrinal, uh, warm, applicable preaching today. Um, and so if my, my father-in-law, who's in, in the ministry, uh, says that you should read a book on preaching every year, and this would be a great one to pick up to work through, uh, I think it would help you greatly and would build you up as a preacher of God's Word. So, great little selection of books there. I hope there's something there that uh, is helpful of, or of interest to you. Please do uh, let us know if you want any help finding a book. That's what we love to do. Uh, it's been great to have you with us. Uh, and tune in next fortnight for another Browser Bookshop with Tom.